Okay, future Eber interrupting this episode. Uh, now in the air all set, you can actually notice the cables right over here. I did try my best, but I will talk about why um, it was a little bit difficult for me to do that uh, a little bit later in the video, but I am working on a separate content idea on how to actually clear it even better. So definitely stay tuned for that. So to begin with, we have the desk that holds this thing together. And I decided to go with a sit stand option because given the dangerous amount of time I spent in front of a screen, I wanted something that improves my posture and keeps the circulation going. The desk frame is from Shopper Plus. It comes with two motors and supports tabletops from 43 inches to 87 inches in width. It's made entirely out of steel and can hold up to 275 pounds. And it comes with three programmable memory presets for your desired height. For the price, you really can't go wrong with the set, guys, since everyone at the Montreal office has been using it for the past few years and it's still going strong. As for the tabletop, I drove to Ikea and picked up the Edison in brown, which is 63 inches wide and 31 and a half inches deep. So plenty of space to accommodate all the tech that's going on to the setup. Now, putting this whole thing together took me half the day because I had to make some room here in the studio. And the instructions that came with the frame were really easy to follow. They do provide the Allen keys as well, which was awesome. The brown finish is a completely different vibe, guys, compared to an all white tabletop. Since it complements uh, the white accessories in the setup, uh, it actually adds a nice contrast too. I'm glad I went with this option. The monitor of choice is the new Sony InZone M9. Now, this is a 27 inch 4K 144 Hertz IPS display with an ultra fast one millisecond gray to gray response time. And it comes with this unique tripod like stand that adapts to your keyboard and mouse orientation. This has been a fantastic panel for my needs, which primarily involves gaming and of course doing a little bit more productivity oriented stuff. 144 Hertz is buttery smooth for the titles that I play. It's razor sharp and I can also use it to edit my photos as well. Sony, I think you nailed the image quality on the M9. Oh, what a great day. Designed and miniaturized in Sweden, you can now nano and mini with the Meshify 2 and the Find 7 series. Wow. Everyone's been asking Fractal to complete the series for that iconic experience, just on a smaller package. Always capable in the right hands. Some might say these are cute. I say they're very classy. See you later. Now, if we shift over to the peripheral side, keyboard of choice is the K5 Compact RGB with the transparent white base. This is a 65% keyboard, which doesn't take up too much space. It's customizable from the ground up through Extrify, so you can choose your design base, switches, keycaps, the frame that goes on top, the cable, and the logo plate that's magnetized. Now, my spec comes with the Tech-C Jedi linear switches with white keycaps and a white coiled aviator cable, and it looks incredible. Now, these Jedi linear switches are absolutely amazing. They are factory lubed and come with slightly shorter travel compared to Gatoron Reds that I'm used to but uh, I wasn't really able to tell the difference between the two. What surprised me the most with this keyboard was the thockiness. There's enough sound dampening foam and high quality PCB mounted lube stabilizers that gives you a consistent and smooth typing experience. I've also added a wooden palm rest from Keychron to match the tabletop. Just using this thing during my gaming sessions has been an absolute blast. Here's a quick ASMR session for you guys. To complement the K5, I chose Extrify's M4 RGB wireless mouse in white. The ergonomics are perfect for my large hands. It comes with an extra modular shell that can easily be swapped out if you're looking for a little bit of support for your palm and tuning your grip style. I was actually really surprised at how lightweight the body is considering the fact that there's an internal battery that's rated to last for up to 75 hours. Now, I've been using this thing for almost a month without plugging it in and it's still going strong. So that's great. And the wireless performance is fantastic. Uh, it does pair to a PC over a 2.4 GHz dongle, and it was an absolute pleasure to game with, guys. I've also added the GP5 Lightest White XL mouse pad to tie this whole set together. I love the abstract design, and it's a cloth surface which creates a smooth surface for the M4 wireless mouse. It's an excellent combination, and it also doubles as a cool top-down texture for B-roll. You see, as a creator, I have to think about these things. I am back to say the Nano has this really clever fan shroud to direct the airflow directly into the main chamber, while the Mini is all about reviving that whole MicroTX form factor. So join the Nano Mini Club with the Meshify 2 and the Define 7 series. Explore all the case options down below. I'm out for real this time. All right, so what about audio gear? Well, believe it or not, I wanted something that matched the white color theme and wireless, and I decided to pick up the Corsair HS80 RGB wireless in white. Now, 
If you want to learn more about this headset, my good pal Dimitri did an awesome job going over all the details, which you can check out right over here. Those are the wired versions, which still are almost similar in terms of sound signature, but you should check that out. But what I really appreciate about this pair is just the comfortness because the memory foam ear pads are super breathable and they also create a good seal and I can comfortably game on it for hours. All the controls are right at your fingertips and the microphone quality is absolutely amazing, guys. I don't know what sort of sorcery Corsair is using here, but the vocals are well detailed. It almost sounds like I'm talking to a boom microphone. Uh, I actually end up using this a lot for Zoom meetings and they also sound really good. It's powerful with boomy bass and crystal clear range in the high ends. I really enjoyed using this pair for gaming. The wireless freedom just allows me to move around here in the studio shooting B-roll while also listening to music. It's certainly worth checking out. Now, the last addition to the desk is some ambient lighting. I'm actually still looking to add some overhead lights to brighten up the space a little bit more. But for now, I chose Corsair's LT100 towers. These are slim RGB lighting strips that are attached to a base and is reversible depending on how you like the look. I got the starter and the expansion kit to add some more flavor to the setup and it looks gorgeous, guys. The diffusion is perfect, it's bright, comes with a ton of lighting effects, and it just really adds some character to the space. Plus, it looks good in B-roll. Now, controlling the lighting effects or just any sort of settings uh, is pretty straightforward through Corsair's IQ software. I had no hiccups so far, fingers crossed on that part. They've also included a removable headset holder, which is perfect for my HS80 headset. So in terms of cable management, let me show you what I'm working with. Obviously, from this angle, it doesn't look the greatest, but if I were to shift to what normally I view, it looks perfectly fine. So I'm pretty happy with the way how it turned out. But let me show you my situation right over here. So uh, right over here, I mounted a power bar uh, at the top just to kind of clean things up a little bit. I've secured or routed my PC power and the monitor power and the power for the Corsair LT towers over there. Uh, and obviously the other reason why I mounted it was because of this Sony bar that's sitting right over here with the power adapter. Because of how short the cable is, this was the only way for me to securely place this without having that whole thing just dangle around uh, right over here. So yeah, that was an interesting solution, but uh, let me know if you guys have another alternative option for now. Um, over here, I just have some excess cables and uh, that's about it. Now, one of the cool things about this desk frame is that it comes with an internal cable management tray. So if you have any excess cables, you can simply just pop it inside. Uh, in order to access it, all you have to do is remove these two screws. The tray comes out, pop the cables in, and you just secure it back in place. Okay, so this is something that I really wanted to showcase in this setup video. It's a vertebrae system from Vivo. So essentially what I've done is reroute all the cables coming from the desktop through this vertebrae system to my power outlet. So essentially that includes the, uh, the cable for the sit-stand desk, the frame, and the power bar. Now what's cool about this vertebrae system is that it actually adapts to the position. Now because this is a sit-stand desk, obviously I'm going to be switching between my sit and stand position. So if I click the sit setting, then you'll notice that it actually collides in a really cool fashion. And um, I don't know, it looks really cool, guys. So if you're thinking about finding a clean and simple solution to organize your cables, this is a must have for a sit stand solution. And that's it. That's the gaming setup. Oh, before I forget, this is the main star of the show that's powering this whole setup, guys. It's the all white, all AMD, AM4 based gaming PC. Love this thing. I made an entire build sequence video, which you can check out right over here. But the specs basically include a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with an RX 6950XD GPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and I've got almost four terabytes of SSD storage just for my game library. And that's about it. And of course, I've added some RGB bling from NZXT and I've got this really cool cooler as well. So that's what it is. Last but not least, to complete this gaming setup, we need a chair. So this is obviously not one of those traditional gaming chairs that you would find, but instead it is an office ergonomic chair. It's from Hayworth, Howarth, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but it's the Zodi series. This is a bit on the pricier side, but uh, I was actually able to pick it up on sale from a retail furniture shop that just had it on liquidation. So I was pretty lucky with it. Love this chair, it's awesome. I've just been using it for almost two years now and it's just been great. Well, there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed this setup tour of my little gaming station. I'm so happy that I can just zone out for a few hours playing Forza or Overwatch, but I might need to switch that up a little bit with my library. If you guys have any game suggestions, please let me know in the comments down below. Also, if there are any cool accessories that uh, is just an awesome add-on for a gaming space, uh, yeah, let me, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to check those out. On that note, thank you so much for watching. I'm Ibor with Harukinax. 
And uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Oh, and spend responsibly. <laughs>